Keep spawning culture. Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed, Mossy Creek Mushrooms. Yes, I know I look like I'm wearing the same stuff I was last week, and that's because this isn't last week to me. This is today still from the spawn video last week, remember? Anyways, <laughs> I'm sitting here in front of my production Thor. This is the old style wooden hopper. Uh, that used to have the water system on the front um, and then the slide gate system that been built this is now a timer based system it's on the conversion kit um, this is what I use for my production blocks so in this hopper I have in this hopper I have oats in this hopper I have my wood pellets um, and that's how I do my fruiting substrate and yeah my fruiting substrate is now that made of the same materials as my spawn it's whole oats and wood only two materials I have to do right two materials that I have to keep up with less inventory that I've got to work with oats are more expensive I pay 33 cents a pound for oats for sure the yield I get off them more than makes up for that um, I get nice heavy yields my substrate is 65 percent fuel pellets 35 percent whole oats hydrated to 60 percent uh, just so you guys know, I do 12 pound blocks in the XLS A or the actually with a lot of stuff now I'm doing using the XLS Horizon bags, uh, which are more expensive too, but I like the results I get with them. But the um, it comes out to five pounds of hard substrate uh, and like seven, seven and a quarter pounds of water that come through. I do all of that on the, the control box uh, for different size bags that I have if I want to do different sizes. I just basically dial everything in, write my numbers right there with the Sharpie on the control box so that we can do quick changeovers. Changeovers are as quick as beep, boop, bop, done. So I like this, uh, the Thor thing. The Thor system, good grief. Thor, friend to man. This is Thor, friend to farmer, or mushroom farmer in this case. Um, <clears throat> I did this because, hey, I wanted to simplify my life. I didn't want to have to control multiple streams of inventory whole oats are easier to get organic for those of you who are wanting to do organic farming um, I mean I think you can get organic soy and things like that uh, but whole oats are, are super easy they're grown here in the states um, in, in big quantities you can get them at tractor supply you can get them at online retailers you can get them all over the place so I really like whole oats uh, they're a little bit more expensive so a lot of people like to avoid them but again with our kind of profit margin that we've got in our crops I'm not worried about the material cost. My material cost could double, and I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, so, I mean, even if, if my bags doubled, my substrate doubled, I'm really not that, that as concerned with it because the biggest single cost to me always is labor, and my labor is the most important on my farm. So, <laughs> um, and when I mean most important, I mean to be jealously guarded. Of course, I can't do this without all the people that help me. Um, obviously and I should I do uh, should and do respect that but all of this said I like this it's simple 65 35 split gives me really good yields I've trialed this on oysters I've trialed this on herisiums trialed it with shiitake and I've been running this for a long time now and this is why I'm actually doing this video now is my shiitake trials have come in big time I've done 3790 3782 those are long done those did fantastic on this block. I will say with this mix, I see popcorning like I have never seen popcorning before. And as we know, popcorning is the store the specialized storage cells for shiitake. So bigger popcorning oftentimes actually means bigger fruits. For example, this guy is old because I used it for spore printing. I had a block covered with these, two pounds of these giant caps, big meaty caps. It's a, it's a really nice strain. This one I uh, was actually, so I'm doing shiitake for the breeding program so that I can work on breeding better strains of shiitakes for the, the big farmers. But um, this right here was their Halo variety. Um, and I got that in, I think it was around 13, 14 weeks. Again, massive popcorning. Um, and then of course I've spore printed that. So it looked a lot better the other day. Maybe I'll have a picture, maybe I won't. We'll see if I can get that off my phone and onto my computer for this. Um, all of this said, 
I just use my production Thor. Again, I like my grains force hydrate, just like I do uh, with my spawn. I let it happen in the pasteurizer this time. Um, I can fit, you know, what is it? About 120 12 pound blocks in my pasteurizer at a time. I can do more technically, but again, I can fit something like 32 spawn bags in my autoclave. We only do 28 because of busted bags, malformed bags, etc. Same thing with the pasteurizer. I could squeeze more in. I don't because I get better cooks when I run it this way. I cook my blocks at um, what our temperature is about 209 degrees, and we run for about 24 to 36 hours. In the deep winter, I might sometimes run 48 hours at the pasteurizer. Not my favorite thing. I prefer sterilizers, but those are a little bit more expensive than pasteurizers in a trough. So, uh, that said, uh, let me see if there was something else. That said, let's take a word from our sponsor. Introducing the future of mycology, Dr. Silurian's Elixir of Mycelial Mastery. This isn't your average culture mix, it's a revolution in a packet, crafted for the dedicated cultivator seeking unparalleled growth. Experience the visual alchemy of this masterful brew. As you mix 10 grams with 500 milliliters of water, watch the solution transform into a rich amber spectacle. The hallmark of a nutrient-dense sanctuary for your burgeoning mycelium. This is where vibrant color meets vibrant life, setting our elixir apart from the ordinary clear liquid cultures. Prepare to be captivated. Mix 10 grams of Dr. Silurian's elixir with 500 milliliters of water, add a stir bar for thorough integration, and sterilize the blend at 15 PSI for 45 minutes. Once cooled, introduce your favorite culture into this perfectly prepared, nutrient-rich environment. Watch in awe as the elixir works its magic unveiling a mycelial masterpiece before your eyes. Choose Dr. Silurian's Elixir of Mycelial Mastery for a mycological adventure that's as visually enchanting as it is potent. Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed. I'm the sponsor. <laughs> we'll have other sponsors on as well, but I haven't made their videos yet. The Gold Leaf Oyster is now for sale on the website. This is a new one that was sent to me from Ohio for the Mycologium. I have permission to sell it. Um, this gold leaf oyster, it is huge, it is heavy, it is flexible, and not brittle, and the smell is salivatory worthy. It is amazing. So, with that, this week, so starting on about the 9th of May, seven days later, um, so the 16th, you're looking at code gold leaf will save you 15% site wide. And I mean, that's pretty much on everything. So again, that does stack with our thank you codes. So make sure you check that out. Um, when you receive your package, we put a thank you note in there. That thank you note has a code on it for you to save 15% for like a three months. It's like a three month code. So we also have our spawn page up. So use that 15% on your spawn. You know, save quite a bit. We actually priced our spawn very competitively because we can make it so well now. So check that out. Check out the Gold Leaf Oyster. Use your code Gold Leaf. That's a single word. G O L D L E A F. Gold Leaf. And guys, try yourself some stuffs out with a with a discount code. Back to the video. Welcome back, y'all. I know. I was the uh, again <laughs> the the sponsor for the video. <laughs> that said, uh, oh, real quick, I'll just throw this in there. If you guys use petri dishes, plasticware, whatever in your lab, centrifuge tubes for slants, etc., etc., uh, you go to celltreat.com. You can get that stuff there. So we'll just do a secondary uh, sponsorship, I guess. But you'll save 25% on your orders through them if you use mo code Mossy M O S S Y two zero two five. Twenty five percent. So I just we'll throw that out there for you guys to use. Um, I, they're an affiliate of the program now. They uh, they sponsor us. And they've been really really good to us. And uh, plus, I love all the little plushies and stuff they sent us. Anyways, um, <laughs> with this guys, this mix of substrate that we're using has worked really really well for me for every species I've grown 
Uh, I'm getting really good yields, but the number one thing after switching to whole oats for my substrate is no more Neurospora. Last summer, zero Neurospora. Uh, all through the winter time, almost no bacterial problems. Pathfinder, the one I've talked about that has been difficult to grow sometimes, even though it's like the best oyster ever, it's one of the more difficult ones to grow because of blotch. No more blotch problems, hardly. I I've barely seen blotch since I switched over to the whole oats. I think it's in part because our spawn is on a self-selective substrate, being sawdust and whole oats, which are covered in an outer coating of lignin, and it's a lot of lignin when it comes to whole oats. Um, plus, they don't burst very often, so it's not a lot for bacteria to consume. And then in our fruiting blocks, very little ability for bacteria to grow from a pasteurized substrate into this mix because it's a self-selective substrate. Self-selective meaning the substrate selects what organisms grow on it. It is, has a lot of lignin in it, so only lignin eaters can really enjoy it. Mold can get to a little bit of the cellulose sometimes, hemocellulose, things like that. The way I always go though, you don't have to use whole oats. You can use cat food, you can use dog food, you can use black hole sunflower seeds. The biggest thing is, is I try to get my dry ingredients around three to four percent protein, right? So if I can get my, my substrate supplementation to three to four percent protein, and then the rest is carbon, which is hardwood, softwood, straw, those are three lignus materials that are really good for this, um, then you have a self-selective substrate. That's why people used to use straw to grow oyster mushrooms on back in the day, because you could pasteurize it, do kind of a crappy job, put oyster spawn to it, and it would grow oyster mushrooms most of the time. We're just taking this and putting it into a sterilized substrate now. We're using whole oats because it allows us to streamline our inventory, um, and then our production's made real, really easy from this. Of course, I like these old Model 4s. I guess the new Model 4s actually, mine's at stand-up height. That's why I always forget. But I love the 4 systems because I can carry a bag on my shoulder, put it right here, open it up, and it's done. Uh, again, with the tall, the tall system from last week, um, that you saw last week anyways, has the vacuum systems that'll lift the pellets and the oats up and then dump them in the hoppers. Which is a lot cheaper than any of the auger systems or anything like that. Oh, and the, the vacuum systems, I forgot to mention last week, that they are, these are special wired to 120, uh, or 110, or whatever. Um, so that you can use them in American homes a lot easier, <laughs> homes, operations, etc. So with that, y'all, next week we're going to get into inoculation processes, and then we're going to get into the grow room and show you a lot more about how we do a grow room. Again, like I said last week, Mossy Creek Mushrooms is moving, so we are actively working on downsizing a lot of things, but we're streamlining our processes, getting things ready for the move, and so that I can... A, have time to film things out while they're being built out at the new place. Because this will be the first time that, um, and I have not seen who we're moving with. There's a combination of forces going on here, and it's super cool. You guys already know it, uh, who it is. I mean, you don't know who it is, but you already know the person if you watch my channel. So, uh, you guys will see, but uh, we'll be doing some combination. So, it's actually really cool because we're going to have two different, actually probably three or four different specialists working at this farm, and it's going to be a consolidated uh, operation. So, very excited about it. As soon as I get more permissions to share it with you guys, I will. Um, so, be on the lookout for that, the build-out videos. But again, next week, inoculations. We're going to the production lab to do inoculations. So, I will see you then. Keep spawning culture, y'all. Keep spawning culture.